Rick's Firearm Academy of Detroit continues its daily tribute to heroes, patriots, and renegades all this month in recognition of Black History Month. Before we get started with today's honoree, I want to pay the bills. And by paying the bills, I mean I want you all who have been enjoying this daily tribute throughout this month of February to render us a small tad bit of tribute. If you see this post in social media, kindly garner us a like. Please forward these daily entries to your friends, family, co-workers, anyone within your inner circle. And also, please consider subscribing to this channel. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with today's recognition ceremony. Today's honoree is Frederick Douglass. He was born in a slave cabin in February 1818 near the town of Easton on the eastern shore of Maryland. Separated from his mother when he was just a few weeks old, he was raised by his grandparents. At about the age of six, his grandmother took him to the plantation of his master and left him there. Not being told by her that she was going to leave him, Douglas never recovered from the betrayal of the abandonment. When he was about eight years of age, he was sent to Baltimore to live as a houseboy with Hugh and Sophia Auld, relatives of his master. It was shortly after his arrival that his new mistress taught him the alphabet. When her husband forbade him to continue his education because it was unlawful to teach slaves how to read, Frederick took it upon himself to learn. He made the neighborhood boys his teachers by giving away his food in exchange for lessons in reading and writing. At about the age of 12 or 13, Douglas purchased a copy of the Columbian Orator, a popular school book of the time, which helped him to gain an understanding and appreciation for the power of the spoken and the written word as two of the most effective means by which to bring about permanent positive change. Returning to the Eastern Shore at approximately the age of 15, Frederick became a field hand and experienced most of the horrifying conditions that plagued slaves during the 270 years of legalized slavery in America. But it was during this time that he had an encounter with the slave breaker Edward Covey. Their fight ended in a draw, but the victory was Douglas's as his challenge to the slave breaker restored his sense of self worth. After an aborted escape attempt, when he was about 18, he was sent back to Baltimore to live with the Auld family. And in early September 1838, at the age of 20, Douglas succeeded in escaping from slavery by impersonating a sailor. He went first to New Bedford, Massachusetts, where he and his new wife, Anna Murray, began to raise a family. Whenever he could, he attended abolitionist meetings, and in October 1841, after attending an anti-slavery convention on Nantucket Island, 
Douglas began to become a lecturer for the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society and a colleague of William Lloyd Garrison. His work led him into public speaking and writing. He published his own newsletter, The North Star, participated in the first women's right convention at Seneca Falls in 1848 and wrote three autobiographies. He was internationally recognized as an uncompromising abolition, abolitionist, indefatigable worker for injustice and equal opportunity, and an unyielding defender of women's rights. He became a trusted advisor to Abraham Lincoln, United States Marshal for the District of Columbia, Recorder of Deeds for Washington, D.C., and Minister General to the Republic of Haiti. Frederick Douglass died late in the afternoon of early evening of Tuesday, February 20th, 1895, at his home in Anacostia, Washington, D.C. Frederick Douglass sought to embody three keys for success in life. One, belief in self. Two, take advantage of every opportunity. Three, use the power of spoken and written language to effect positive change for yourself and society. Douglas said, quote, What is possible for me is possible for you. End quote. By taking those keys and making them his own, Frederick Douglass created a life of honor, respect, and success that he could never have dreamed of when he was a boy on Colonel Lloyd's plantation on the eastern shore of Maryland. This has been another salute to excellence in recognition of Black History Month. If you don't like guns, you probably don't know your history.